नमस्ते एंड वेलकम टू आर ब्लॉग टुडे वी आर गोइंग टू बी व्यूइंग द म्यूजियम व्हिच इज एन एस्टैब्लिशमेंट बाय द एंथ्रोपोलॉजिकल सर्वे ऑफ इंडिया एस्टैब्लिशड इन देहरादून एंड एज वी ऑल नो एंथ्रोपोलॉजी डील्स विद द स्टडी ऑफ लिविंग सब्जेक्ट्स एंड हाउ दे हैव इवॉल्वड ओवर अ पीरियड ऑफ टाइम सो इनसाइड वी कैन सी देयर आर अ लॉट ऑफ एनिमल्स देयर आर अ लॉट ऑफ species of different kind of uh, living creatures and their existence has been portrayed so we will be taking you along this journey so let's take a look this is a skeleton of cheetal we all know this so basically this is how a female cheetal is supposed to look like and this is the skeleton of cheetal at the same time if you see here this is the uh, body structure of a fawn cheetal which is a female cheetal and uh, the skeleton of the same this is the trunk i mean the skeleton of a male elephant and it's really big compared to the skeleton of a female here we have different type of feathers of western tragopan tragopan melanocephalus and basically this is a um, uttarakhand's bird and um, the habitat is ringal bamboo and conifer forest that is where they stay and they need a uh, like a height existence of 2700 meters so as you can see it has various um, like um, feathers so on the neck this would be the feather on the breast this is the kind of feather you find and the wings in uh, the tetiaries are different so is the tail and uh, basically um, this is also the real one the the real sample which is kept here and wow this is really exciting this is the skeleton of an ajkal and it's so beautiful to see how nature itself is captivating itself and it's just so beautiful to amazing it is python molaris is what the terminology and scientific term is now you all must be wondering how these birds are still the way they are kept so i'm not really sure of the process but they uh, fill some sort of uh, chemicals into the body of the birds or the animals just to make them you know stay that way for a very long time so here there is birds of the northern region where we have himalayan pied kingfisher you know different kind of parakeets and as we all know is quite dangerous so magpie robin and uh, below we have the mynah the grey headed mynah black headed mynah jungle mynah all these mynahs are here and then we have uh, some green pigeon some uh, black throated jay himalayan tree pie um, hair crested drongo a grey winged blackbird uh black trongo so these are basically all the birds which are which are found in the northern region and this is really very exciting to see from such a small size that is a northern blue throat to a massive jungle crow i mean nature itself you know is really captivating and i wish i could take them home <laughs> moving on here we have some so this is the white breasted kingfisher and just to showcase um the see how they've tried to manifest it by keeping a fish also something i'd like to show you guys in every compartment there is like a um, small dish kept with uh, cotton and uh, a cloth tied with some material so i think that preserves the entire internal system for them to um, stay that way and uh, here are the birds of prey again these are a nation of how nature itself formulates a circle so and then you can also see on the wood owl that it is also captivated the uh, the other bird i mentioned black headed oracle uh, the the yellow bird so itself you know how they 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 find their own uh, food it's within the food circle this is the in pengolian uh, and wow what a beautiful creature again here is some of the skins of different kind of bears that they have kept we saw the uh, the skeleton of a barking deer it's quite smaller in size compared to the spotted deer and um 
Below we have skull of a fish, skulls of vulture, skulls of a wild boar and at the down we have some of the animals which like to rest there on, um, you know, on the feet. The grey musk shrew, we have the yellow turtle, we have the skeleton of a monster lizard as well and also um, like a real life size monster lizard is also kept inside. Moving on, we have the common mongoose, which many of you must have seen in their gardens roaming around. And again, the civet cat, which we just saw. Uh, so yeah, just look at uh, the details of how they've tried to captivate the beauty and the existence of these animals, just to, just to, just to preserve the culture and showcase it for the future generations to come and see how necessary it is for us to preserve the habitat. Otherwise, we would all just be visiting museums just to see how things existed in the previous time. And um, if, if we do not mend our lifestyle, if we do not mend our ways to preserve the ecosystem of India, unfortunately, we won't be able to see any of these in real life. So yes, um, it's quite unfortunate. Also, I'd like to mention one thing, all of these animals that are kept here, they are not killed or they are not kept here for a specific reason to show. They met with an unfortunate death due to various circumstances. So uh, the Anthropological Survey of India has taken the initiative to uh, you know, use those uh, bodies of the animals or the creatures, the birds to their maximum potential by keeping them here. The birds of the northern region, how the uh, habitat and the system works. Now we are moving to the western Himalayan ecosystem, just a glimpse of how things work and everything that I just explained. For us to have it preserved, this is what the natural habitat of the uh, Himalayan ecosystem looks like. And here um, you can also see that they have numbered uh, the kind of trees. So all of the trees which you can see inside are different in, uh, in nature. And, and they've mentioned what all kind of number, what all kind of trees depict what and which animal is what. So all the animals, all the birds that we just saw, they just uh, tried to portray it in a manner that how it stays inside the ecosystem of the Western Himalayas. Platyrosaurus, as we all know, like this is basically um, like a bipedal dinosaur and it existed about 225 million years ago. So uh, this is also from the Mesozoic uh, era and uh, they were supposed to be inland water uh, creatures. So this is a model of how it was back then. Um, some of the reptiles as we already saw, the skeleton of Ajgar, skeleton of the snake. These are again kept in the liquid. These aren't preserved with the chemicals. They are um, just to make sure that they stay that way, they put it in the liquid. So you can see we have the common grate here. Uh, and then we have the Russell's Viper. We have King Cobra. So these are the small, uh, I'll say the infant sizes. They were yet to grow. That's the rat snake. Then we have a yellow biled mall snake as well. And um, below also you can see we have the garden lizard, we have a twin spotted wolf, we have the common trinket snake, uh, common wolf snake, large wolf work snake. Then we have, this is a fetus of a sheep. That's the fetus of a pig, tailless hare, chick of a squa and golden mushy. But uh, yeah, I mean, just for the general public to come and visit and see how these animals work, how the beauty of nature takes its course. This beautiful uh, museum has captivated it to its utmost potential. Moving on, we have some of the eggs from different kind of birds, just the way we saw. So these are the wire-tailed swallow, goose, a pigeon, cooker, goose again, laughing. Then we have the domestic uh, duck, common manna, house sparrow, which we all see, um, domestic hen, that is, which is mostly used for poultry, mm, spotted dove, skeletons of the beaks and the toes, because uh, I'm, I would like to emphasize that birds, as much they use their wings to fly from one place, one of the very important part of their body is their beaks and their toes. Because if you know, uh, many of the animals like to prey from their uh, claws. 
and the way they eat is of course their beak so the kind of size of the beak and the structure their uh, toes are it formulates in which habitat they are from now you wouldn't see uh, like a large cr um, set of toes on a mena because it is not meant to sustain that kind of habitat or it is me not meant to approach uh, different things you know by having long claws so similarly it has smaller set of toes so if, if you move to a crow it has a bigger beak because that is how the nature has formulated them and they are supposed to be kept in that particular region only what practices many of the people and keep them for their own lifestyle purposes and therefore nature has created different birds with different kind of claws and beaks because they are used for different purposes and now we would like to see so we have um, the breaks in toes of a great hornbill, uh, pariah kite, crow peasant. So all of these birds we already saw and these are you know how their internal structures look like. And you can also see a cotton teal how the beak is and how the, the toes are since it is meant for an aquatic it's an aquatic bird you can see how the flaps or the the structure of the toes is similarly compared to of the great horned owl look at the skull and how the toes are and then we have some beautiful um, butterflies which are captured from the Uttarakhand survey of the Lepidoptera. so you can see that um, we have different kind of butterflies and this is just too beautiful we have some more fetuses and these are basically the parental stages of some domestic and wine mammals which is a fetus of a langur, a fetus of a horseshoe, a fetus of a mouse hair, fetus of a sheep, we already saw that, then fetus of a jungle cat, fetus of a spotted bear, fetus of a mouse, fetus of a goat. And all of this just doesn't end here, on the walls as well for you to captivate um, them. This is one way of a reminder or a reality check from the nature that um, different animals are built with different abilities in different ways. Similarly, how we in humans have also evolved over a period of time just for us to have a soothing at a particular region because that is how we're meant to be and uh, that does that explains the different structures of different horns and antlers of these animals because they're supposed to sustain or exist in nature with that kind of build and with that kind of habitat so please it's a request for you all to be very uh, cautious of what you're doing to the surroundings in nature because you might not know but down the line eventually you are in some or the way or your actions might be affecting the lives of these amazing animals and amazing birds and species that we've just witnessed habitat and if you want to come and see this and live with the nature and get a glimpse of it feel a little down to earth of where you actually come from how life evolves from one state to another i would request you all to come and definitely visit this anthropological survey uh, which is situated here uh, in dehradun it is also in the campus of the fri forest reserve of india and um, Again, it, it in itself was a very great and a knowledgeable experience, gives you a sense of where you actually come from and how you belong in the um, wildlife. So gives you again a warning of not to fiddle with the wildlife and keep it the way it is supposed to be. And uh, yes, I hope you all loved coming along this journey with us because I truly uh, enjoyed every bit of it and I would love for you to come and see and uh, drop down your views at the visitors book which is also kept here and if you come here you will definitely see my name along with the name of my camera person Priya. We are students of uh, Masters of Arts of Chitkara and um, we would like to take your leave now. Thank you so much.